it's a, this is it's, it's spiritual and, and at some level very demonic, a demonic attack. We're seeing revival in Israel, we're seeing souls being saved. It's all connected together. And that's why the enemy doesn't want the people in the world to know this. Messianic Rabbi Zev Peratt, Pastor Carl Galps, we're here with you on another edition of Ephesians 2.15 Ministries. My brother Zev, it's good to see you, good to have you, looking forward to this program today. It's great to be here, uh, Brother Carl, Pastor Carl, and we're in an exciting time of seasons. Ephesians 2.15 uh, Ministries program, it's the one new man, what Paul speaks about, one in Messiah Yeshua. Yeah. And so that's the heart of God, and that's the heart of uh, our ministries to unite together as the one new man. That's right. A Jew and a Gentile together taking the gospel to the world. But that's how God did it from the beginning at Passover. He brings them out. And the Bible tells us the number of the fighting men of Israel, and it was 600 and something thousand, which means with the women and children, they're probably a million and a half people. But then it says, but many others from the nations came out with them. Many, Always been one new man. Yeah. So who were they? They were Gentiles. So who came out of Egypt under the blood of the lamb? Jews and Gentiles, if they got under the blood of the lamb. So they it's started all about, off It's all together. about the blood. That's right. It's all about the but, blood. But, but you go through the scriptures and you realize that the Jews, though, were given the specific responsibility of being the holders of the covenant, the holders of the word, the givers of the word the priests to fellow Jews and to the Gentiles. Because you get into Chronicles and it talks about where, where God says, so when you are doing your sacrifices and you bring this lamb or this ox or this whatever, make sure that those that are with you from the nations bring the very same sacrifices. Yes, that some translations would say the foreigner, some would say the stranger, it doesn't matter, but it's always been a picture of one in Messiah Yeshua. It's not, it's not a new message. It's one That's message. Right. That's right. Genesis to Revelation. One new man, Ephesians 2.15. That's what it's all about. And we're in the season right now of Nisan, season of Passover, unleavened bread, resurrection, first fruits, an exciting time. And a lot of people like to ask the question, you know, what does it make a difference if we're on the biblical calendar or if we're not on the biblical calendar, as long as we celebrate Passover. Right. Well, that's like saying, what does it make a difference if you read Matthew or you read Isaiah? Yeah. I mean, it makes a difference. I mean, you, you need yeah. to read them in order to understand. No, not only that, but you have to know the context. And so, yeah. So why don't, why don't you give us an example or two of why it's important that we understand biblical dates biblical dates because those dates don't always correspond to our calendar the calendar the world goes by the gregorian calendar well in order to understand the biblical calendar in a in, in a simple way the yeah. the biblical calendar goes sundown to sundown uh, the worldly calendar is midnight to midnight now obviously right. we live our lives based on the midnight to midnight calendar because that's how we book airplanes. That's how we send our kids to school. That's how we go to work. We we can't go to work on a biblical calendar because you can't go in late to work and say, I, I came in on a biblical calendar. You'll get fired. So obviously this is what Yeshua <laughs> spoke about. This is what Yeshua spoke about. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. Right. That's what he, but when we study the word of God, when we examine the word of God, when we understand the word of God, we must be on the biblical calendar. We cannot be on the worldly calendar. Otherwise, we won't understand the context of the Bible. And that's why, you know, you go to the book of Revelation and there's so many prophets out there, five or 6,000 prophets translating, <laughs> you know, giving opinions on the book of Revelation because most of them are studying on the worldly calendar. You can't understand that. You have to be a student of the word and go into the Old Testament in order to understand the New, because it's one book. And so I want to give one example here that would show the importance of understanding the biblical calendar sundown to sundown. Okay. And that's in, in John chapter 12, verses 12 and 13. I'll just go ahead and read that. Uh, there are many translations. I chose the one that I believe is closest to the original text. The next day, the great, uh, the great crowd that had come to the feast, now we know it's speaking about the feast of Passover, Pesach, that Jesus was on the way to Jerusalem. They they took uh, on the way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out and meet him, shouting Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. But we don't we don't know any anything about what day it was. 
We just know that it was before Passover. But if we back up and we go to John chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, here we have the key. And it says six days before the Passover. Now, what's six days before the Passover? Well, if you're looking at a calendar midnight to midnight, your six days are going to look different than the one who's looking on a biblical calendar sundown to sundown. So six days before the Passover would be Nisan 8, because we know that Nisan 14 is Passover day. Nisan 8 would be six days before. So we already have a clue here. Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus lived, whom Yeshua, who Jesus has raised from the dead. Now here it says, here a dinner was given in, in Jesus' honor. Martha served there, where Lazarus was among those reclining at the table. And so there is a reason why God shows us here that it's six days before Passover. Six days before Passover, we said Nisan 8. That dinner would have to be sometime during sundown, whether it's 5.30 or 6 p.m., I don't know, but it was a different date based on a biblical calendar. And so it's already Nisan 9. You may be asking, what does that make a difference if it's Nisan, if it's, you know, if you know that it's Nisan 9 or 8? Well, it makes a difference because Nisan John 12, what we read before, says the next day. Now, the next day, when you and I think about a worldly calendar, the next day would be after midnight. But no, here the next day, is speaking about a new, the, the next sunlight day. Right. But is the sunlight day still Nisan 9? Absolutely, because it's it's sundown to sundown. So the next day is still Nisan 9 after that dinner. What does that make a difference? It makes a huge difference because on what happened on Nisan 10? Nisan 10, they begin to ins inspect the lambs. And Yeshua, Jesus, is the Lamb of God. He's also inspected for four days. And so, so you mean on Nisan the tenth in the temple, the priests are going to inspect the lambs? Absolutely, right. And you sure? So, yeah. So what saying, happens on Nisan the ninth with those lambs? What happens? Well, where do the lambs come from? They come from Bethlehem. They come from Bethlehem, right? Um, and so they had to come in from Bethlehem into the temple in order to be given to the household on Nisan ten. We found that in the book of Exodus on Nisan 10. But in order for them to come to be ready to be given to the household on Nisan 10 for inspection, they had to begin coming in on Nisan 9. This would explain why Yeshua came in on Nisan 9. Also, right. right. later on the day, they begin, which is sundown, is Nisan 10 already. It's still the same day on a worldly calendar. But on a biblical calendar, remember, there's a switch at sundown to Nisan 10. They begin to give the lambs to the household and they begin the inspection. And that's right. where Yeshua also began to be inspected. Right. And so here's just a simple example. What happens if you don't know the biblical calendar? And what happens if you do know the biblical calendar? And, so, and it's, it's a huge difference because if you don't know the biblical calendar, how are you going to understand all these texts? You won't. Right, right, right. And, and thank you for your Hebrew knowledge and of, of the scriptures. And, and so let me just make it very simple for, for people that might have missed something. The bottom line, what Zev is saying, is what the scripture says. And he and I have had long conversations about this, so we both agree on this. So when the Bible says that Jesus came to Bethany six days before the Passover, well, the Roman world may not have been going by the Hebrew calendar, but I guarantee you God was. And so Nisan the 14th of that week would have been, as you said, the Passover day. Then at that night at sundown, they would start to eat the, the meal. And then the feast of, of, of unleavened bread is coming in. And so, but anyway, but so six days before would have been the eighth. Okay. Six days before the 14th. And then they have that meal. But as they're having the meal, more than likely it's going into the ninth because it's past 6 PM. So then right. of course they go to sleep during that nighttime. And the next morning they get up and it is a new day as far as the sun being up and all of that. But on the Hebrew calendar, it's still the ninth. And what's happening in, in reality is that the lambs from the Bethlehem fields are being brought up to the temple because now it's Passover week and they're being the final lambs of that week are being brought in and coming in with those lambs is Yeshua. He's coming in. He is the, the Lamb of God. He's coming in at the same time that the lambs from Bethlehem are coming in. Well, where was Yeshua born? Bethlehem. He's a lamb from Bethlehem. He's coming in. The lambs are coming in. And then on the 10th, 6 p.m. that night on the 9th, 
it becomes the 10th. So the next day, we would say, the next sunlight day is now the 10th. Jesus goes up to the temple and he's just, the crowds are coming. They're there to hear him teach and he's just getting started. And what happens? Here come the Pharisees, the Herodians, the Sanhedrin council, and they begin testing him. And what they're doing is they're, they're a part of that testing process. So, testing the Lamb? Yeah. Testing so, the Lamb of God. So, yes, so like what, you, what you're saying and what I'm trying to, to you know, to, to simplify, but I may not have, is, is that God's calendar matters. Everything is happening according to the calendar of God. From the time he arrives in Bethany, remember some weeks before he had raised Lazarus, but now he's back in Bethany. He's going to eat that meal where Martha and Mary and, you know, the, the jar of perfume is broken and, 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 and he's worshiped through all that. We know all of that. But there's he's at Beth, Bethany. The, the meal is given to him on the 8th. But then he arrives with the lambs at the same time, the lambs from Bethlehem. He's the lamb from Bethlehem. They're arriving to Jerusalem. The lambs are taken up to the temple. And so that's when Jesus, of course, goes and clears the temple. Tell us what that's about. Well, he comes in and he turns over the money changers because the Bible says in, 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 in the book of Exodus that for seven days, you should not have levit in your home. And whoever has levit in their home will be cut off from Israel. Now, those who don't believe in Yeshua, and unfortunately, some that do believe in Yeshua, take that literal. They, they, they think that they really, if they eat levit, then God is going to cut them off from Israel. But that's not what it's speaking about. Levit speaks about sin. Paul also says a little levit spoils the whole lump. And so he's speaking about sin over here. And so Yeshua now is going in the temple, which is God's house. And he's cleaning the levit out. He's taking the sin out. When he turns over the money changers, he's cleaning dad's house before Passover, which is sin. When it says in the book of Exodus, they'll be cut off from Israel. It means all those who don't believe in Messiah Yeshua will be cut off from Israel. That's what it's speaking about. It's right. speaking about the sin. And so this is what Yeshua is doing. He's cleaning dad's house before Passover. When you begin to see all these events together, the Bible comes to life. And again, if you're not on the biblical calendar, how are you going to see it? I want to touch uh, on, a, on another issue here on the on John chapter 12, where it says the next day the crowd you know, came to the feast and to speak about Lazarus being raised from the dead. That was what the, what the dinner was all about. It was about to celebrate. And if you continue to read the Bible, the Pharisees wanted to plot it to kill Lazarus. You know, no use. Yeshua would just raise him up from the dead again. But the reason that it was done in this six days before Passover was to show us, first of all, that be, the way he raised Lazarus from the dead, he's going to raise everybody from the dead who believes in him spiritually in a few days. This is why the event happened before Passover. And so if you look at Lazarus' name, what does Lazarus mean? It doesn't mean anything in English. It just, what does it mean? But what does it mean in Hebrew? In, in Hebrew, Lazarus is called Eli Ezel. The word El is God. Eli Ezel means God help me. So Lazarus' name in Hebrew means God help me. Did God help him? Yes, he raised him from the dead. Is God going to help each one of us? Yes, all those that call in the name of Yeshua shall be saved. And that's another beautiful picture why this event happened in the Passover season. And there's so many, so so much we can talk about. Yeah. yeah. And again, if you're not on the biblical calendar, how are you going to see all these things? Right. No, that's that's beautiful. That's perfect. We're going to have to go here in a moment. Before we do, just want to talk very quickly about your latest book, The Blood Covenant. And that is an amazing book. You and I have done some interviews already, some television shows, and some of those shows are out. I know Skywatch programs are all over the place and others as well, and more will be coming. But um, I can remember the, the host of Skywatch saying that it was the most important book he had ever read. And he thought like it would be for all Christians as well. And he said, it certainly was the most important book that Defender Publishing, who is your publisher and, and mine, and, and uh, he says it's the most important book that's ever come out of Defender Publishing. So, wow, I, when he said that, I said, wow, that that's, I agree. I mean, I wrote the forward for it. You asked me to, thank you so much, uh, Toda, and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and 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 so I I know everything that's in it, and so uh, tell us just very quickly about the the blood covenant. And again, we've only got about three or four minutes, but go ahead. 
entering to Passover season, without Passover, without Yeshua at three o'clock in the afternoon, giving up his spirit and saying it is finished, it is done. By the way, at the same time, he was on the Mount of Olives. You can look down at the Mount of Olives and see that priest slaughtering the Lamb of God at the same time, three o'clock in the afternoon, the same time that Yeshua gives up his spirit. And so we, most of us, if we think about what did Yeshua accomplish on Passover day when he gave up his spirit, he rose from the dead on the third day, he, he the answer is salvation, but salvation is the outcome That's right. of what he accomplished. What did he accomplish? He accomplished the blood covenant, the blood alliance. And so it's all in the book documented what it's all about. The greatest gift given to mankind happened in Passover. Without Pas Passover, you and I would not be here today. Right. And so and there's also the demonic forces trying to stop that. Some of it by getting people out of the biblical calendar, others by getting people to celebrate Passover by by you know Judea, Judaism ceremonies that have nothing to do really with the they're, they're, they may be very nice or very interesting, but really Yeshua didn't do that. Yeshua gave us the the way to celebrate Passover. He told his disciples, "I desire to have this Passover meal with you." It wasn't the Passover meal because Yeshua is the Passover lamb, but it was a dress rehearsal, and he showed us how to celebrate Passover by breaking bread together. And so the enemy is doing everything he can to get us out of the beautiful picture of what Yeshua accomplished. And so there's so much in the book that I get into and all that, especially the spiritual side and also about Easter and other things in the in the book that yeah. are interesting. Yeah. Easter, Sabbath, uh, blood alliance, blood covenants, threshold covenants, basically. But um, wow. And, and you do, man, you go into great scholarship showing Everything you're saying, you're not just pulling out of your back pocket. I mean, the archaeology supports it. The biblical language supports it. The biblical connection support it. The Hebrew, the Hebrew mindset and understanding supports everything you're saying. A, a plethora of scholars, Jewish and Christian, that under, so the Jewish understand it from, from their perspective, of course, without Christ. But still, they speak to the facts of the threshold covenant importance. And then we come to the fulfillment in Jesus. And wow, it's all through the New Testament, sometimes just flat out, other times kind of in illusions. But yet, if you know this stuff, then the New Testament comes alive for you. So that's why the host, I think, when we were doing those shows, he was just going crazy. He said, I've never seen that before, but there it is. It's right there. And he said, that makes all the difference in the world. I'm going to give a you know statement. Well, thank you, Pastor Carl. I'm going to give a statement here that may shock a lot of people, but replacement theology was never on the biblical calendar. Never, never. I started never to say that calendar. early on in this program. Something came up that you were saying, and I started to say, yeah, it's not replacement theology, folks. No, no. The church has not taken the place of the one new man. The one new man the came has, out of the congregation has joined the one new man, has That's joined right. Israel. The one new man came out of Israel under the blood of the Lamb. Jews first, but the Gentiles grafting in, coming out under the blood of the Lamb. I mean, that picture's there. Paul talks about it in Romans 11. I mean, it's it's just all through the Bible. And you know what? Another thing, and I've said this many times, being Jewish or being Israeli is not a ticket to heaven. Yeah. Ticket to heaven, only Messiah Yeshua, who said it with right. his own mouth. No one makes it to the Father, but only through me, blood covenant. That's right. And I, I love what you say about the Jewish people. You say, to the Jew first, that's true, because that's how God did it, but not to the Jew best or better. In other words, Absolutely. it's not about the Jews being better than anybody. It's not about the Gentiles being better than anybody. You see, a lot of Gentile Christians today think, well, yeah, we take the place of the Jews. We're better than those Jews. We, no, no. It's always been Jew and Gentile people. But God chose the Jewish people through whom he would bring the word, the prophets, the prophecies, the, the, the prophecies of Messiah. He would bring Messiah. He would bring the cross. He would bring the resurrection. He would birth the church. All of that came. The gospel, it all came through the Jewish people. And that's and why. It's just that God has order, and yes. God's order is from Israel to the nations, and now it's yes. time for the nations to bring the gospel back to Jerusalem and go home. That's right. On the contrary, it says in Deuteronomy 7, I believe, that God chose Israel not because they were great, because they were the least. God yeah. wants to show glory. That's why.
That's right. You're right. You're right. We've got to go. Messianic Rabbi Zev Parat, thank you so much for joining me today. Folks, thank you for joining us. We appreciate you being a part of this ministry and uh, for supporting us with your prayers and everything else. Uh, get on Zev's website. You'll see it there right below him. And um, go to that website and uh, subscribe to his newsletter. Look at his books. Uh, you can order them there. You can come to my website and you'll see that link right below me. Um, and, and you can order his books, especially if you're in the United States and, and any, really anywhere in the world. And um, one way or the other, we will get them to you from my website as well. Very soon, we'll do another one of these programs. But uh, I think, you, man, you got some good stuff out there today, Zev. And uh, we love you. Probably. And in the meantime, I praise God that he put you and me together, a Jew and a Gentile. A Gentile from the Gulf Coast of, of, of the United States and a Jewish guy that was born and raised in one of the most orthodox families, orthodox cities, orthodox religions on the planet, but you come to Yeshua. I came to Yeshua in my life, and in a miraculous story, God brought us together. We'll have to do a program one day and let the people know what that miraculous story was, how we came together. Absolutely. It is the Absolutely. hand of God. Yeah. Supernatural. Adam Achadash, the one new man. Gadolata Adonai. Great are you, Lord. Beshem Yeshua HaMashiach. Adonai. Amen. The, so, Thank you for joining us, folks. We'll see you again very, very soon. May the Lord bless you and keep you always. Shalom. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Skywatch TV. I promise you are in for a royal surprise when I reveal what today's topic of conversation is going to be for the live audience. You know who's here. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a brand new book to reveal, and it is one that I believe is one of the most important books that Defender Publishing has ever released, an absolute warning for the days ahead, prophetically spot on and timely. The new book by Messianic Rabbi Zev Porat with forward by Carl Gallup's Blood Alliance, the attack on Yeshua's threshold covenant and its impact on you in the midst of our prophetic times. Dr. Tom Horn, who is the CEO of Skywatch TV, an acclaimed best-selling author himself, raves about Blood Alliance. He says, Messianic Rabbi Zev Perat has done it again. In Blood Alliance, he's taken several deep mysteries of God's Word and served them up in a thoroughly understandable, engrossing, and biblically contextual manner. I assure you, he says, once you see the truths that Zev brings into glorious revelation, You'll soon begin to recognize those truths throughout the scriptures, hidden in plain sight from first to last. Blood Alliance is an absolute treasure trove. Have you ever heard of God's threshold covenant? If you haven't, you're in for a roller coaster ride of biblical discovery that will enhance your understanding of God's word and the application of it to your daily life like never before. Messianic Rabbi Zef Parad will be taking you on a much deeper dive than you've probably ever previously experienced. In Blood Alliance, you'll come to understand the true nature of spiritual warfare like never before. You'll uncover the biblical truth about long-held traditions that still assault God's truth and His grace to this very day, throwing massive doctrinal confusion into almost the entire modern Christian church world. Finally, learn the truth about the temple on the Temple Mount and what the Old Testament and New Testament clearly lay out for the last days. Shocking surprises await you. This truly is a life-changing book to the glory of Yeshua, Jesus.